Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Femi Osofisan's play Once Upon Four Robbers. Uh, now, I love Femi Osofisan. He's one of my favorite dramatists, um, one of Nigeria's most important playwrights. And Once Upon Four Robbers is, I think, very characteristic of his style and approach to dramaturgy. So uh, the play is set shortly after a despotic government, a despotic Nigerian government, uh, military dictatorship, establishes a rule that the penalty for armed robbery is death. Um, so this uh, footnote here, I'm reading this out of uh, Helen Gilbert's collection, Post-Colonial Plays, which is an amazing collection of plays. Uh, the footnote says, The federal military government of Nigeria under General Gowon passed a decree making, uh, making armed robbery punishable by, by public execution. The gruesome practice ended only with the coming of a civilian administration in 1979. So this is the context. Now we have these four robbers, and they are... Uh, concerned about this decree, in part because the first thing we see is their, the execution of their leader. So, not quite the first thing. I, I should correct that. The first thing in the proper plot of the play that we see. I'll come back to that point. Um, but the first thing in the proper plot of the play that we see is the execution of the leader of this group of robbers, which raises the question amongst the rest of the robbers whether or not they should continue being armed robbers or whether they should give this up in an attempt to avoid execution themselves. There's a substantial amount of debate about this. Uh, they go back and forth with different people taking different positions. And then finally, uh, they encounter this guy named Atha, who is some sort of priest or holy man of some kind. Um, he, he seems primarily to be a Muslim, but he also uses charms from uh, Yoruba religion. So it's not 100% clear, but he is in some way a powerful spiritual and religious figure. And he makes them a deal. He makes these robbers a deal that he will give them the power to gain untold riches if they make him three promises. They have to swear to three conditions. Uh, the first is never to rob the poor. The second is to rob only public places rather than individuals. And the third is not to use violence, not to, uh, not to kill anyone specifically. The robbers agree to this, and so Afa gives them a ritual chant. It's a, it's a four-part song. He gives one part to each of the robbers, um, and then and basically the premise is they each have to sing their own part, and what that will do um, basically is it puts whoever listens to the chant into a hypnotic state where they dance and sing and then go home to sleep, abandoning all their stuff. So we see the robbers use this chant against uh, the women of the marketplace. The women dance, sing, leave all their goods, and the robbers take all the goods from the market, which they can then sell. The next time, the robbers get even smarter. Uh, they, they wait until the close of the market day, when the women have collected a lot of money rather than having a lot of goods, and they use the song again, this time actually overcoming a bunch of soldiers who've been put there to guard the market, as well as the market women. And so they rob everybody in the market of all their money, and they go. But one of one of this group of robbers betrays them. He turns on them to steal the money from them. Uh, he 
get shot by the soldiers, but doesn't die. Uh, but he does get captured. The soldiers take the money and they actually divide the money among themselves rather than rather than admitting that they have recovered it. So we get this sort of theme of corruption, but this idea of corruption does keep coming up um, because we get a scene with a couple of soldiers building the uh, execution place where the robber who was shot and captured is going to be executed. And a lot of their dialogue centers around the privileges of the rich and how the rich game the system to uh, avoid legal repercussions for their corruption, their exploitation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so that becomes a big theme. Now, the other three robbers, despite the fact that this guy has betrayed them, decide that they are going to attempt to rescue him, which they attempt to do first by uh, tricking the two soldiers building the execution place into letting him go. Uh, and then finally, they end up actually using the song to uh, to escape, robbing everybody there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, interestingly enough, at the end of the play or toward the end of the play um we find out that one of the robbers is the brother of the sergeant the military sergeant who is in charge of the executions and so they actually end up having a bit of a debate um basically about the ethics of robbery in a in a system that is corrupt and that's stacked against the poor. So this is uh, this is the socialism aspect because Osafisan was for at least parts of his career uh, a socialist. He was very very interested in issues of the exploitation of the poor, of inequality, etc. Um, etc. Et um, So, for instance, the robber who's going to be executed, his sort of final words are this, this speech against corruption. Uh, he says, yes, the day is beautiful. Your stomach proves it. But man is so fragile, so easy to kill, especially if he robs and lies, if he wantonly breaks the law. Sarge, today the law is on the side of those who have, and in abundance, who are fed and bulging, who can afford several concubines. But tomorrow the law will change. The poor will seize it and twist its neck. The starving will sh smash the gates of the supermarkets. The homeless will no longer yield in fear to your bulldozers. And your, and your children, yes, your dainty little children, will be here where I stand now on the firing block. And he sort of goes on like this, um, periodically being interrupted by the sergeant who's trying to get him to stop making this speech. Um, and so we have this we have this debate about the nature of society and how society can can function equitably and justly with the sergeant sort of saying order justice are important and robbery is a crime robbery robbery needs to be penalized but the robbers asserting there is no opportunity for poor people, working class people, to get ahead in a world where corruption is a, a part of day-to-day -day life. Um, and so we have this big debate, and that becomes important. I'll, I'll come back to the very, very ending in just a second. Um, but one of the other things, so that sort of thematic element, that stylistic element of Ethical debates about the, the nature of society and the way that society should be run is very characteristic of Osafisan's dramaturgy. It's one of the things he does consistently. And one of the other big things that Osafisan does is he incorporates these very traditional West African performance practices into his dramaturgy. Um, so particularly Yoruba performance traditions, because that's uh, the ethnic group that Osafisan is a part of, um, but he incorporates these very, very 
uh, consistently across his plays. So one of the things that he incorporates that I think is just sort of brilliant are proverbs. He loves proverbs. His characters are always giving us proverbs. They exist throughout Once Upon Four Robbers, but I'm going to give you one of my favorite ones, which is a pebble sits light in a catapult, but it still squashes the lizard, which I just, I think is a great saying. I'm going to start using it. Um, but the other element that Osofeson uses in Once Upon Four Robbers, he gives us an introduction. He gives us a narrator. Um, it, it, it's a, it's the prologue, um, which is given to us by a character called Storyteller. And the, the prologue is actually done in song. So the Storyteller comes out on stage um, or into the performance area or whatever it is, and basically uses this traditional approach to calling people together for a performance. Um, Alo O is, I don't, that's probably not the right pronunciation, um, but it's spelled out A L O space O. Um, and then everybody, re and it says here actually, as usual, everybody replies. So clearly, this is a recognizable formula for Nigerian audiences. As usual, everybody rep replies, Alo, A A A L O. Again, probably my pronunciation is bad. I don't speak Yoruba. I'm not even going to try to pronounce any of the words in the songs. But that's actually what the introduction is. Um, the prologue is a song, and it's written out here in Yoruba. But at the end, we get the English language translations of the songs. So... This opening song, the prologue song, starts an ancient in English, not in Europa, obviously. An ancient tell tale I will tell you, tale ancient and modern, a tale of four armed robbers, dangerous highwaymen, freebooters, source of tears, like kites, eaters of a cursed sacrifice, visitors who leave the house desolate, dispatchers of lives to heaven. And it goes on. From there, basically introducing what this performance is going to be about. And so that's a very, very standard element of traditional performance in West Africa, uh, among the Yoruba and, um, and among other uh, ethnic groups in West Africa. But the ending of Once Upon Four Robbers is somewhat unique. This is a technique that does show up in some cases, but it's not necessarily as standard. It's a way of directly engaging the audience because at the end, at the end of the play, uh, we have a sort of cliffhanger. The robbers have begun singing the song that's supposed to hypnotize everybody so that they can escape. The sergeant is trying to get his soldiers to shoot the robbers before they can complete the song. And the storyteller cuts in. He says, walking around the auditorium, he says, a stalemate. How can I end my story on a stalemate? If we sit on the fence, life is bound to pass us by on both sides. No, I need your help. One side is bound to win in the end. The robbers are the soldiers who are acting on your behalf. So you've got to decide and resolve the issue. Which shall it be? Who wins? Yes, madam, your reasons, please. And you, gentlemen, should the robbers be shot? Please do not be afraid to, to voice your opinion. We want this play to end. Okay, I'll take five opinions and then we'll let the majority carry the day, yes? So the, the audience gets to vote on who is successful at the end of this play. Do the robbers win, these sort of folk heroes who are standing up for the poor and the oppressed, even if that involves committing crimes? Or do the soldiers, the representatives of power and order and authority, win? And there's instructions in the stage directions for either outcome. You get the, the, the play ends by getting members of the audience to voice their opinions, to give their reasons, and then a vote. 
And there's specific things that occur either way. If the majority of the audience votes for the robbers to win, we get um, basically them finishing their song and robbing everybody. If the audience votes for the soldiers to win, we get um, one, some of the robbers being shot, some of the robbers being arrested, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's very much a, an ending that engages the audience and a, almost in this democratic way allows the audience to decide who wins, which ethical position they want to stand with.